2023 itself, the demand of gold was close to 4,500 tons of gold. During inflationary times, gold yeah. has been seen going up. So if you see yeah, the history of, of last 50 years, sure. whenever the inflation was over 3%, gold performed mm. 15% returns. Could be afternoon when the audience listen to this well or the evening time it is yeah live from dubai <laughs> it's garab and monet and we're going to be talking about gold mm. that's right gold on chain welcome to the latest episode of fumo the future money pod- podcast brought to you by cft our producers xvc.tech our sponsors and mfta our ecosystem partner thank you for joining us today and Gaurav, we've got an amazing conversation with our guest today. Um, Naveen, thanks for joining. Thank you for having me on. Naveen, give us a little TLDR about who you are and what you do. Uh, myself, I'm the CEO of Comptech Gold. Uh, been more on the traditional finance industry for over 25 years now. Started with Deutsche Bank, National Stock Exchange, then moved on to the bag was uh, the director for operations for 12 years with Dubai Gold and Commodity Exchange. Then I moved on to Dubai Financial Markets to help them set up the post-trade section of trading, the depository and the clearing house. And last two years, setting up Comptec Gold, which is a digital gold solution. Digital gold. Um, let's unpack that. So gold. Um, let's start with gold. Um, this is a topic of fascination in this region, in the Middle East. Um, Dubai is built on gold trading. I think the three of us, if you go back far enough, we're all from India where uh, gold is a cultural and social fascination. Why does gold capture the imagination of people so much? Like, why in this region in particular? So if you see from a gold perspective, gold yeah. has always given a sense of uh, security for people over years. Kind of right. So, so I always keep on telling it, saying that uh, my mother doesn't follow financial markets. Yeah. But she knows the price of gold. She knows the price of gold. Yeah. So when so, the price goes up, she's yeah. like, what's happening? Why is the price going up? Really? Or when the price is going down, what's happening? Why is the price going down? And so she, she, she calls you or tell a taxi and goes, why is the price of gold going up? Yeah, so, so he says the prices uh, of gold are uh, going up. So, so what's happening? Everything is fine. And yeah, that's where's your, how old and where's your mother? So my mother is based in India. Yeah. Uh, she how old is she? 75 years. Oh, wow. So 75 year old lady in India just tracking the price of gold. Yes. So yeah. for them, that's, that's the way the economy works kind of thing. And secondly, right. if you see from an it's like, asset perspective, yeah. uh, Markets go up 5%, 10%, nobody bothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the price of gold goes up 5%, the whole world knows about it. It's yeah. true. So, so yeah. It's, it's like gold of the shines. So this is always close to people. Yeah. And because of many obvious reasons. One is uh, it's easy to track. Yeah. Highly liquid. So people always consider it as a substitute for money. Mm. And it's always considered with accumulation of wealth, traditionally. Right. As well as a point of investment. So if you see globally, every investment manager will say that you should allocate 5 to 10% of your portfolio to gold. So that's considered as a hedge against inflation. Right, right, right. So it has this benefit of proven security, liquidity, and this amazing cultural resonance yes. and significance in places like India, the subcontinent, Middle East, more so than in the rest of the world. I mean, maybe it's just a question of where we are in the historical cycle or or the cultural cycle, but gold has this resonance here in the Middle East or in back in India in a way it doesn't today in the West, right? It's it's yes and no, because if you see from a central bank perspective, the yeah. highest gold reserve I yeah. have by the US. Right. <laughs> so it's over close to I think over eight point five tons of gold which is held by them. Mm as compared to the rest of the world. So, yeah. so the, even the central banks are holding gold. And if you see for the last 
15 years yeah the gold accumulated by central bank is close to 7.7800 tons and 25% of that is bought in last two years so in last two years oh, itself wow. the central bank has accumulated around 2000 tons of gold They're still buying gold still buying gold and mm. the popular one this year was china which is accumulating gold over years and years. So what are they? They're selling yeah. what? Dollar assets and buying gold. Buying gold. So, yeah. so most oh, of the yeah. reserves are held yeah. in gold by Central Bank. And if the banks are moving to it, there's something yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's sort of zoom in on um, putting gold on blockchain. And we'll talk about Comtech Gold in a second, but why do we need blockchain and tokens or tokenization to be involved? I've got gold, it's sitting in my safe deposit box or under my bed. I'm not going to ask where your mom has her gold, but you know, it's, it's safe. Why? Or it's in jewelry. You know, why do I need blockchain and all this crypto paraphernalia involved in gold? So, so right from what you rightly said kind of yeah. thing. So gold has been a traditional asset where people yeah. have invested over years. Yeah. But the way of investing in gold has not changed. Mm. And it is predominantly what you mentioned is you just buy gold jewelry, keep it yeah. in the house. Or the financial institution buys gold bars, mm. stores it in the vault. So there is no change over years in the way the gold has been bought or held kind of thing. Mm. So this is where blockchain comes into picture. This is right. where we are trying to figure out, yeah. do you actually need to go the traditional way of investing in gold? You yeah. want to invest in gold. Why do you have to buy the physical? Because first of all, it's not cheap to buy gold. Yeah. The cost of acquisition of gold, if you compare from a financial to a retail, could be anywhere between 3 to 10%. Mm. Uh, you'd be very surprised to see here that uh, even if you go to the gold market and you see that's a price, that price is a 3% premium over international price. So just to buy jewelry, you're paying a 3% premium apart from your making and the other cost. Second, you take the gold and store it in the vault. You're paying storage, insurance, mm. custody, all of it. And all of this gold is just locked without coming back to the ecosystem. Yeah. So this is what mm. blockchain will have, where the gold can be in its place. It's yeah. a reserve. The custody can keep on moving. You can use it for <coughs> benefits, for transaction, let's say lending, borrowing. It is basically going back to dematerializing securities. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. the old days, yep. you used to have paper. physical paper yeah. shares. And you see the revolution which has happened the moment you went into a DMAT form. Mm. Lending, borrowing became easy. Collateralizations became easy. Mm. You can use it as proof of value, proof of wealth, everything. And the amount of transactions which have happened on shares after the DMAT form has gone drastically up. So why do you hold gold which is much older than shares yeah. to be bought and sold in the old form. Why don't we have a it? So the idea of putting gold on blockchain or putting it on chain is for you it's analogous to the dematerialization of securities going from paper to virtual. Yeah. And that you know, has improvements in efficiency, not just the transaction cost, but what you can do with it, how you can sort of hypothecate and rehypothecate and use it and Let's, let's double click on Comtech Gold, your company that you've been building. And Gaurav, you're going to ask some questions on that front, right? My favorite part. So for me, looking at learning the origin of how this industry was and is and can be is something we've just been talking about. But really love to focus on what you do at Comtech. Because as much as we can theorize and look at things like total addressable market size and we look at what is the market customer, you know, that's obtainable by Comtech. Let's start with, yeah, what does Comtech actually do? What do you offer and how does it work? So, so Comtech is uh, a solution where we have taken the power of technology and the security of gold and brought it together to create something called fractionalized or tokenized gold. And with this, it allows investors to have an access or an investment to gold in a tokenized form but with the 100% security that each and every token is backed by physical code. So we have built in an independent governance framework across it, wherein each and every token which is issued is always backed by physical code. And we are using a partnership governance with DMCC Trade Flow, which is an independent government of Dubai body, to ensure that the proof of reserve exists. What this helps is we are the first digital gold solution in the Middle East. 
we are Sharia compliant, which yeah. ensures that uh, whatever tokens are not only backed by gold, <coughs> but they are identifiable, segregated, and allocated. So it is not some reserve of gold which is available kind of it's backed by 100% one kg gold bars. Mm. So this allows people to have gold in their pocket or in a blockchain world, gold in your wallet. Hmm. So you can move around the globe hmm. using your gold. You can transfer it to anybody. You can hold it as an investment. You can keep it in your cold wallet. You can keep it in a hot wallet. You can do anything with it. So the idea is to change the way you invest in gold. Hmm. Add more liquidity, more ease and reduce cost. So that was the whole idea about it. So who are your customers per se from the solution that you're bringing to the market? Is it businesses? Is it consumers? Is it both? So it's, 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 it's a mixture of both kind of thing because uh, as you rightly said that uh, right from central bank to financial institution to retail, everybody invests in gold. So we are changing the way, the way you invest in gold. So this is a solution which is for everybody. So financial institution who wants to invest in gold can buy the tokenized gold, hold it in their digital custody with a guarantee that whenever they want physical, they can just redeem the tokenized gold for physical gold. It is good for retail investors who instead of going and buying coins, bars and others can use the tokenized version to buy any denomination. The lowest can be half a gram. Oh wow. And it's all in your wallet. It's all mm. in the palm of your hand. You can buy it any point in time <coughs> at a price which is cheaper than the bull market. You can transfer it to anybody. You can hold it. At the same time, you can redeem it for physical gold in a jewelry form. Wow. Wow. You know what's super interesting to me is, is you can build something so quickly in the regulated space. Mm. But what's also even more interesting is do people necessarily have to know that it's powered by blockchain technology? Because just having the access in mm -hmm. a secure mm -hmm. manner itself, as a consumer, mm. I know you're a regulated entity. I know you're working with licensed institutions. I can see it's yeah. backed. I can see that trust that it's yeah. there. And if you're a consumer, what you want is access, right? right. I'm getting this, as, as you said, Naveen, I'm getting it in a small amount right. or a big amount, but I, you know, I, right. I can tailor it. It doesn't have to be a set right. like amount of jewelry or a bar. It's, so that's the interesting yeah. part, right? Is a lot of the Web3 space yeah. catered only to people that were knowledgeable about accessing the Web3 space. Mm -hmm. In your mm -hmm. instance, that's not necessary at all. So how are you reaching consumers today? Is it through my Kareem app also? Is it through your app? Is it through other people? Can you can you access yeah. the service? Because Order a Kareem, get your delivery and get some gold at the same time. That's the super apps work, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at Paytm in India. Yeah, yeah. They copied or took inspiration from yeah. another business called yeah. Safe Gold, where you could do a very similar piece, mm. right? So how are people accessing that? And then I have a very, very close next question to ask you. So. So, so we have two models kind of thing. So we have two versions of our gold token. Mm. One is the pure crypto version, where we are listed on three exchanges. We are listed on LBank, we are listed on Bytru, we are listed on Bitmart. Excuse, can you repeat that? You're listed on LBank? LBank, yeah. Bitmart and Bytru. Okay. So these are the three exchanges that are listed. So anybody can go on to these exchanges and buy the token and hold it in the custody. That's like buying stock, yes. effectively. Yeah. Secondly, institutions who are holding physical gold can also tokenize that physical gold. So we accept gold in one kilo bars, either London good delivery bars or UAE good delivery bars with 99.99% purity from the vault. So you can tokenize, just deposit the gold into the vault and we issue you 1,000 tokens again each one kilo bar. One token represents one gram of gold. Thirdly, as you said, not all our investors are tech savvy people. So we mm. have a traditional version of it. So we have our own compact app. Okay. where you can just register yourself, do an eKYC on the app itself, mm -hmm. link your bank account and buy gold. And that links me to the next question, right? People who are familiar with this space, are some of our viewers are very, very tech mm -hmm. savvy people who are very, you know, uh, adept at understanding what's happening in the market from mm. gold technology <clears throat> or accessibility to gold in a fractional <coughs> manner. So what I want to ask you is one of the businesses I mentioned are very similar to you, but they operate on traditional fintech infrastructure. They'll be working mm. on UPI rails, which is cutting edge, but they're not working in the Web3 space. 
Could you tell us what's the benefit of working in the Web3 space or constructing the business that you have outside of traditional rails of fintech ecosystems and structure? What's the difference? Why? So one of the important differences that we see on the Web3 space is a decentralization. Because when you talk about using a fintech solution and everything, the whole custody and the whole asset base is centralized into the database of the fintech provider. But the moment you add blockchain, that allows you a flexibility where you can open it up, where people can buy Comptic Gold, hold it in their central wallet and keep it outside for them to save custody. It is as good as buying jewelry and keeping it in your own locker rather mm -hmm. than going and keeping it in the bank locker. So you're moving away from the entire central space and with the flexibility that tomorrow if you want to sell it, you again connect it back and sell it off to the market. So you are getting the benefits of the fintech as well as the benefit of decentralization. That's where blockchain comes into picture. So this is why we are a little different as compared to the other fintech solution providers, which uses more of a technology space, but it's still a closed ecosystem. So this is where we are different from others. And this is where we see a potential for going forward. I think a uh, last question from my side, Ronit, on this would be, and we've covered pretty much why you, mm -hmm. know, you would want to set up in this region, or especially the UAE being, you know, a leader in regulation adopting Web3 plus <coughs> the affinity for gold across mm -hmm. business as well mm -hmm. as consumer. But my question to you really is, what's next? Where is the next step for your business? Because the idea for you as a business to build it, it has to be scalable. So is your next market India? Is your next market Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Is it Egypt? Where, where next after mm -hmm. something that might seem obvious after this conversation is the UAE to start with? Where next mm -hmm. to build and scale your business? So what, so what we have done is uh, we have set it up in the UAE because it's a much neutral position yep. across the globe, yeah. be it logistically, be it politically. So the gold is stored, secured out in UAE. But we are offering services across the globe. So we did a white labeling mm -hmm. solution for an entity in Thailand. We have oh. done a white labeling solution for an exchange in uh, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing is they are <coughs> using the entire infrastructure where they are launching their own digital good, mm -hmm. which is backed and powered by Comtech code. Okay. So they don't store the physical. The entire infrastructure mm -hmm. is managed by because it's a central infrastructure. They hold Comtech gold as reserves for their digital gold. And this allows us to scale in any jurisdiction and move it across where people can make this at a central hub. Mm -hmm. Next market that we're looking at is obviously the GCC, Saudi being one of the biggest market. Mm -hmm. We are going to be uh, present at the league to see the infrastructure and the others. Mm -hmm. So that is where we are trying to move more on the global side. So if you see from a demand perspective, Asia is one market which gold always shines there. <laughs> and be it traditionally, be it uh, for weddings, for everything, people want to invest in gold, people want mm. to hold gold. So that's a market that we're looking at. Uh, India, we aim to go next, but that would be with a local partner because from the regulatory framework and the others, it's too much to handle remotely from here. So these are the areas that we're looking at expanding. Super interesting. Wow. Let's put some numbers around what we discussed. So today, how big is the gold market? And I mean for the consumer, because I assume that's your target market, not the central banks. Maybe, maybe the central banks are, but uh, let's just define the size of the gold market. And then how big is on-chain gold, blockchain mm. gold? Do you have any numbers that you could share with the audience? So, so if you see from the size of the gold market, yeah. uh, in 2023 itself, the demand of gold was close to 4,500 tons of gold mm -hmm. in one year. And What's that in dollar numbers? In dollars? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's the calculator yeah, yeah, when you yeah. need one? It's, it's, it's huge. <laughs> it's big. Yeah. So How big is the gold, like total stock of gold out there? Total stock uh, is close to, from a World World Council, it is close to 244,000 tons across the world. Mm -hmm. And of that, 190,000 odd tons have already extracted. Okay. So it's around 59 to 60,000 tons uh, in the ground. In the ground, okay. which is uh, what you call the reserves, which have been identified. Right. So that's that's the size of the gold market. And when you right. say about right. central bank, out of the 4,000 tons, you'll be surprised to see that jewelry itself was 2,000 tons. 
Last year. Last year. So 2,000 tons of jewelry. Jewelry, yeah. And jewelry. that was just sort of women you know, probably, no? In I, India? No idea. Don't, no? don't look at me. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just... And some his mom. Well, <laughs> clearly. He, yeah, your girlfriend's yeah. and his mom. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. We'll edit this bit out, don't worry. Yeah. And, and I see yeah. it's a very interesting trend, which yeah. is very surprising to see that uh, during inflationary times, gold yeah. has been seen going up. So if you see yeah, the history of, of last 50 years, sure. Whenever the inflation was over 3%, gold performed mm. 15% returns. Mm. Whenever the inflation was <coughs> below 3%, gold is seen around 6 to 8% returns. Okay. And in the last five years itself, uh, gold has given a returns of around close to 7%, mm-hmm. when the global stocks is somewhere around 6 to 8%. US stocks, somewhere around 9%. So mm-hmm. it actually defeats or changes the mindset when you actually see the numbers. In last 20 years, gold has given you a return of around 8, 8.5%, which is as good as any other asset with the stability perspective. Mm. So that's that's the size of gold out here. In UAE itself, in last year, the demand for coin, bar, and jewelry went up mm. by 34%. 34%? Yes. And how big is the UAE market for gold? So UAE market is not that big enough, but it's somewhere in the close of 100 to 200 tons of gold. Okay. Out of the 4,000 tons, yes. of which 2,000 was jewellery, yes. and India, let's see, a big chunk yes. of that, so, right? So majority is India and China, India and China. which is somewhere okay. about 600 to 800 Usual. tons Everything's each. India and China on the scale, right? Yeah. Yes. But particularly for gold. Well, apparently as well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah no. India's like, India's the biggest market, right? For gold, uh, the second biggest yes. market. So it's, it's yeah. a, Place between yeah. India and China. Right. So sometimes it's India, and both of them range in the range of 600 to 800 tons. Okay. So that's where it's playing around. Then your markets like Turkey, mm-hmm. you got uh, UAE, Saudi Arabia. Mm. Then you have the other Far East markets like Indonesia, mm. Malaysia, and the others. And in that context of these trillion, multi-trillion dollar markets, we'll have to check the gold price mm. on the day this podcast goes out to get the exact price. <laughs> But uh, we'll put it in the we'll show notes. Context to do yeah. it for us. Give us the contact tracker. In, in that context of this multi-trillion dollar market asset class, how significant is blockchain-based solutions? Now? It must be quite small, right? It's it's tiny. very small. It's very small. Yeah. I think uh, the overall blockchain asset in the custody is close to around uh, less than a ton. Less than a ton. So yeah. it's tiny. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. so the biggest in the market is Pexi which is uh, by Bitcoin itself. Mm-hmm. And, and then the others are to follow kind of thing. So we stand uh, number three in the gold tokenization space. Oh, wow. Uh, our market cap is currently close to $10 million, mm. and uh, which is backed by 144 kgs of gold, and mm. it's picking up, and it's picking up first. Right. So let's crystal ball gaze, because obviously this is a very new market, that, or new, relatively new company you're building. It's 2025, it's 2030, how big do you think blockchain-based gold becomes? Uh, so not, not contact gold, the CGO, but just the overall TAM of your market. See, blockchain, blockchain-based gold, gold is definitely going to pick up because yeah. if you see the way uh, stable coins are picked up from USDT, USDC, and yeah. others. So this is an asset yeah. which is a real-world asset yeah. where you know that this is where the actual physical gold exists. It's not some reserve which could be paper or the others. Yeah. And blockchain is a technology which is there to stay. Mm. It's one of the technology which is disruptive now. And we are now combining a disruptive technology with a traditional asset. So we mm. see a huge gain or a huge impact on this. And we see this market picking up at a good speed. I'm going to ask you again. How big do you think the TAM's going to be? Uh, I, I think it should be somewhere, if you talk about yeah. 2025, it should yeah. be at least somewhere into, uh, close to five tons of wood. Yeah. And in see, and five tons, okay. Still and in 2030? 2030, it would be over 10. Over 10. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, the technology or the blockchain technology uh, that you're using, let's talk a little bit more about that. The solutions out there right now, yourself, the others, what are the underlying chains of these different solutions that the different solutions are using and how does that matter? So when we uh, decided to launch the tokenized gold, we did an analysis of various uh, chains that were available kind of thing. Mm. And 
what we wanted was something which was secure mm -hmm. speed and most important cost effective yeah because these are the three important parameters that we're talking about gold as an asset as well yeah and uh, we saw various chain sectors right from bitcoin ethereum and the others kind of thing and that's mm -hmm. where uh, uh, we went in with hdc and uh, many of them ask us saying that why hdc and we say why not so it stands in good at all the C aspects kind of thing. So mm. if you talk from a speed perspective, an HDC <clears throat> uh, transaction TPS per second is uh, close to 2,000 transactions per second, wherein the other chains are offering somewhere between 7 to 15. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when you talk about the sustainability, it's much more sustainable. It's a proof of stake concept. So it is much more environment friendly, it's much more sustainable. Uh, important thing, it's secure. And the most important thing is the cost. On an average, an on-chain transaction between various chains can be anywhere between $10 to $15 per transaction. Wherein on HDC, it is 0 0.00001, which oh, wow. is close to zero. Mm -hmm. So, taking <coughs> all that into consideration, mm -hmm. we found this uh, chain, mm -hmm. something which is more adaptable. Yeah. Something which is can be used with other chains as well. Yeah. So, it was an ideal fit for a stable gold asset. Right. So it's secure, it's fast, oh. cheap, yeah. um, and no downtime. Yes. Doesn't go down. Doesn't oh. go down. And yeah. it's, it's, it's one of the real decentralized chain which I've seen as such. And the other chains out there, I mean, some of your competitors, um, what, what typically, are, what blockchains or layer ones are they on? So they're either on the Ethereum based network or the Bitcoin network kind of thing. So these are the two things okay. which we have seen kind of thing. Yeah. We have seen a recent uh, shift on Polygon as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with some of the chains. But at the end of it, uh, you can always create a wrap contract in any of the chain. So it becomes much more fungible to be used across different chains. Mm -hmm. So that is an advantage that you already have. Right, 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 right. Let's um, switch to talking about building the business, but from mm. the personal side. Mm. Uh, we'd love to hear more about that journey, going from being a traditional finance guy to being and it's TradFi to DeFi, or I don't yeah. know how to phrase it, but Gaurav, yeah. over with, to you, double-click on that. With pleasure. So you, I work with a lot of students, right, at different universities and mm. programs. And when we talk to them, right, we have programs where we talk to them about entrepreneurship. Yeah. And what it comes down to is, we do so many of these sessions, I do so many of these sessions, what we found is, you boil down to either you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. or either you're an employee. <laughs> now, one's not less yeah. than the other. It's about a personality trait. It's yeah. about the ability to work in an organization yeah. or lead an organization and change hats, flexibility. Mm -hmm. There are different elements. And really, this is the core. Uh, and then you can really see at the end of the exercise, who's an entrepreneur and, and being honest with themselves and who's an employee, right? Um, so from being an employee going to an entrepreneur, it's mm. usually built out of something that's a perception, you know, not only grass is green on the <laughs> other side, right? As we all want to say, you know, I'm mm. going to leave my job, I'm going to become an entrepreneur. You've been doing it for a while and you've been an employee in mm. respectable, large organizations for a bit. Mm. Tell us, was it as easy as you thought in the beginning? What was your journey mm. moving from being an yeah. employee to an entrepreneur? How did you find that journey? Interesting question. <laughs> so, big, big sigh. <laughs> friend, it's always... A friend of mine just always <laughs> tweeted out this, uh, this weekend, I think. Um, I gave up 9 to 5 for 24-7. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's what you said. It's, it's a completely different yeah. perspective. Yeah. And uh, it's always learning every day. So, you have seen a lot of things. You have seen... Mm lot of challenges and the others, but uh, that's where uh, the major difference between an employee and an entrepreneur. Mm. So from an employee perspective, you have, you know what's your fixed good. Mm. You know what you're supposed to perform, what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Do my job, finish it off and come out kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But being an entrepreneur doesn't stop. So it's as it's, it's a 24 by 7 job. Always yeah. be hustling, always yeah. be raising, it's always something. Yeah. And, and the most important thing is you have to be versatile. Versatile. Because you cannot be just going in a particular direction because every day is a new surprise. 
you feel that something could work yeah but the next you realize sorry it's a different path only. but if yeah. you're stubborn it's not going to work yeah but the most important element in all of this is uh, my first job deutsche bank uh, the tagline is passion to perform <laughs> so till the time you're not passionate about and you do not believe yeah in what you're doing yeah you cannot do because it's not somebody else telling you it is something <coughs> that has to come from within yeah because that will give you enough fuel power yeah to keep on doing it again and again till the time you succeed so that's that's a very important element mm. and second day is persistence so one day you feel so it's not working but you have to pursue it till the time you feel that you're not on the right path but otherwise you cannot give it up so easily and you look at your position right you're you're working in a in a regulated environment you're looking at building trust with people mm. and you're talking about a very well known topic where people have to trust you not only for the technology you're providing which is a new way of approaching the distribution and fractional mm. ownership of gold but you're also working with institutions that you have to explain about this technology right you have to go to get the paperwork you have to go into the validity you have to show that it it works because this is not you're not a bank yes. you're not a, a known entity you're starting something from scratch so in your journey as an entrepreneur communicating about blockchain technology convincing people to use your platform consumer adoption tell us what that journey was like how how easy was it or how tough was it so it, it it's, it's a difficult journey because uh, you have two generations kind of thing so the new generations are something which is more tech savvy mm mm-hmm. but at the same time they don't believe something called a traditional asset they want their returns 10% 20% in one month two months kind of thing that's real estate right <laughs> and they they want it in a day <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the older generation who believe in traditional asset but do not believe in new technology they mm. want to feel everything they want the physical possession of it so yeah we what we are trying to do is a midpoint Mm. where they believe what this will converge and we are seeing that happening because uh, at the end of it even the, the new investors are realizing that no you can't put all your eggs in one basket you need to diversify and at the same time you have the other generation which knows that you cannot follow the old tradition you have to move with the market mm. you know move with the technology and that's where you can go with this <coughs> and we have different what you call that examples where people did not follow technology and could not be at the same pace where the others went at yeah right from from your phone industry to your banking and the others kind of thing so it's been a difficult journey but at the end of it what is important when we go to financial institution is to put in the whole governance element how we have ensured that the governance is there, the security is there the stability is there how does dncc come into picture how does the sharia compliance audit come into picture how does the vaulting come into picture how does the various audit because that is what gives them trust we are not a bank so most of the products mm-hmm. offered by bank in the gold form are only the digital representation of gold there is no physical gold exists but they are a bank mm-hmm. but when it comes to us this is where we have to emphasize and show them that when you are buying a token the gold exists so that's that's be the challenging journey but it's always been a rewarding journey i think you know it's it's very organic it's like learning you know no one's a no one's a farmer no one knows how to look after plants right you have to learn you kill a few plants you do a few things you plant a few seeds and then you know you're happy when the result no one's a farmer is is that is that a saying it's like an organic learning right no one's a farmer no one's a farmer right from the start you have to learn how to well, have to learn that like that no it. one's a farmer it's how it works okay. it's it's planting seeds okay essentially right that's what it is is that a garvism it is no planting one's a seeds okay. right you seed investing you're doing right. seed things you're seeding a business seeds yeah so now you're in that stage where i think it's blooming right your, yes your, your I, business is 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 it blooming or is it Bearing green shoots, green shoots are coming green out. Green shoots, yeah. green shoots, maybe bearing fruit. Yeah, it's it's, it's like that's. Uh, it's just mangle all out. That's the most. We have been planting seeds for yeah. last year and a half. Right, you've and, been planting, yeah. And yeah. we don't know which one will come yeah. up first. And we are very happy to see that out of the blue something comes up. Right. right. And right. now we have seen a lot of traction in last mm. six months to a year. where now people are going on to blockchain people are going on to gold and the other mm. so so even if you see in the uae there are only three bullion banks some are three to five kind of things so the uh, you have uh, national bank of fujairah you have msnbd mm. and uh, you have vac 
then you have CBD and the others, but others are not bullion banks. So many of these banks, other banks, if they have to offer a gold product, has to go to these bullion banks. Mm. But many of them are now coming on saying that, okay, why don't we have to go there? We can set up something independently. And that's where we come into picture providing a solution for them. Okay. We are independent. We come and say that, okay, we have the whole infrastructure physical. We know how the gold works. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. can provide a liquidity. You can use a network and offer it to the people. Secondly, we are sharing a plan, which is also a yeah. big investment uh, cycle out in the Middle East and yeah. globally now. So this is what we are seeing and we are seeing uh, now people coming to us saying that, okay, what is the solution that you have? Yeah. How can we integrate a solution with you? So B2B so plan. Yes, B2B, B2B to and now it's seeing the results. Yeah, yeah. So, so what we have done is we have built the infrastructure mm-hmm. where anybody can just get <clears> on or do a platform, integrate with us and have their own solution offering. Mm. So that that is the idea. So we have the infrastructure of gold, we have the liquidity, we have the pricing, we have the technology. Anybody just wants to integrate, come onto the platform and mm-hmm. launch in your own gold tokens. I guess the last thing I want to just ask you is, one, do you have any advice for entrepreneurs looking to mm-hmm. come into the Web3 space? A lot of people, yeah. young and old, are either moving to this region, especially the UAE, to start a business, or people mm-hmm. from this region want to use the technology to disrupt or perhaps solve problems or create new opportunities. What advice do you have for budding entrepreneurs in this space? And also, lastly, I wanted to know, mm. does your mom use Contact Gold? <laughs> Those are the two questions <laughs> I, I want to ask, the last two questions. Uh, from an entrepreneur's perspective, where I see is uh, don't look at short-term goals. Mm-hmm. You need to give time to build something because uh, it's always said home was not built in a day. So, don't mm. see that and try to achieve something in three months to six months time. It's not going to work. So you need to give at least two to five years for the business to grow. With a few cycles. Yes. Yeah, that so that doesn't is, grow in its seasons. Yeah. There seasons. We go. seasons. Yeah. So, so that, that is one yeah. of the important things which we want because people feel that, okay, I can just come, set up, and it starts working. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Uh, second, complex good. Not yet because she's based in India. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife has started using it. Oh, okay. Well, you're... Your wife has started using it. Wow. Thank and, you so much. Yeah. So. And if we had uh, your wife here, um, what would she be telling us about your entrepreneurial journey? Would she be like, never again? You know? <laughs> <laughs> the last one. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, how's, you know, like, um, if you had to build another business, just to follow up on what Gaurav was saying, the entrepreneurial question, because... You give up nine to five, but you do 24 um, seven. Would your family be like, nah, don't do it again? Or would they be like, no, go for it because. No, I, from that yeah. perspective, I think uh, she's been very supportive. Right. And uh, important for her is uh, you feel a sense of achievement every time you get something done. Right, right. So rather than working, it's your achieving things and building things. So that mm-hmm. brings in a sense of satisfaction where mm. every step that you build, you look back and see, yes, this is what I've done. Yeah. So that's that's the major difference kind of thing. That's the satisfaction yeah. level, which takes away the effort that you put against you. Right. 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 So she's still backing you. Yes. As a fun. Long may, <laughs> long may that continue. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you on FUMO, the Future of Money podcast. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And to the audience, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. And thank you to CFT for producing this, XBC Tech for sponsoring us, and MFTA for being our ecosystem partner. As always. As always. Over and out. Thank you. Thank you.